Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism. I, as usual, am Max Kobe. Uh, joining me is Rob from a Deflating Atheism. Say hi, Rob. Hey, hey. Hey, remember everybody to please give us a like and a subscribe. By the way, all of our videos were demonetized. Not that anybody will care, I don't think, in the atheist community, but we got completely demonetized. That's okay. We were expecting it completely. We expect censorship. Uh, that's what uh, religious people have been um, treated to for years in the atheist community. Uh, what we're going to be looking at tonight is a, a little bit of an old video from Sargon of Akkad, somebody I used to promote and even like, but this was the video that made me decide, all right, well, I want nothing more to do with him. And eventually it led to me as a Christian even deciding it's time to push back hard against atheism in general. Not this one video, but it certainly was what got me to think, wow, looking for anybody decent in the atheist community is a waste of time. Uh, and this guy's gone on to be much more famous since then. I, 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 I had first gotten to sort of like his work when he was under a thousand subscribers. So it's been w interesting watching his meteoric rise. Anyway, how how been things been on your end, uh, Rob? Uh, okay, uh, I got a new chair here, so that's that's an improvement on my channel. Uh, I'm I've been having a <laughs> you got a couple of videos on the, uh, what, the, the 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 ludicrous. There's no evidence stuff. What? Well, yeah, what's that? What were your latest two videos on? Yeah, uh, well. I had the uh, the video where where a science enthusiast actually filed a DMCA against me. Oh, of course, atheists uh, like that stuff. Yeah, again, another attempt at, cen at censorship, and uh, then I have uh, uh, there is no evidence for God, which is a, oh. a a two and a half part series, or or yeah. two parts and a really dumb part. Yeah, I, I really like the there is no evidence series, uh, really because. Uh, I, that there is no evidence stuff. Well, we'll get into it when we hit this. But every time you say there is no evidence for God, you lie, people, and that includes you, uh, Sargon of Akkad. So okay, anyway, uh, can I just say something to that because because it was it was like a, a an entirely expected reaction. At the same time, it's it's oh it's always it, it's just it's just so like drearily expected. But people were literally, they were like ignoring everything I said and simply restating the arguments I was responding to in the video. They say, there is no evidence for God because there is no evidence for God. And so for me personally, uh, uh, it is out of the realm of logic. It is out of the realm of philosophy. It, I, I place this matter uh, uh, in the hands of, 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 uh, of psychologists at this point. They need to tell me why do atheists' brains shut down when it comes to this article of faith? Why, yeah, why do they hit that brick wall when it comes to there is no evidence for God? They're, well, I guess it would be a question for neurologists, actually. Why, why do their brains shut down? We're going to get the great Carl Benjamin here to explain to us that there's no evidence for God and his opinions about that. So why don't we jump into this and yes. save some of that energy for him because you're going to wind up giving it to him, too. All right, hi, Carl. By the way, we don't hate you, but we don't feel sorry for you either. At least I don't feel sorry for you. Um, so uh, let's let's go ahead and give this a play, our usual way to try to avoid copyright false strikes as much as we can. Here we go. I know that I have a bunch of people who are of the um, religious persuasion following me. If you're one of those people, I suspect you're probably one of the more sort of rational religious people who understands that not everyone shares your faith. Anyway, Ben Carson, a man running for the Republican nomination for presidential candidacy, destroys atheists. What he said will have you cheering. There are a couple of things about this. A, I guess he's proven that God exists, because that's the only way you're going to destroy atheists. But secondly, I love that the right wing have discovered clickbait. <laughs> it's just, it's brilliant. It's not enough that it was confined to the progressive left. Now the desperate right have it. Anyway, let's see how Dr. Carson has destroyed atheists. We have to stop listening to these people who tell us that we cannot talk about God, we cannot talk about our faith. So you're proposing some kind of faith rape then, are you there? They're saying literally, I just don't care about your invisible friend in the sky. Okay. Okay. 
I, I didn't quite. Let's talk about your faith. What? What did he say? He, he, here's the thing. It, he's already started with his invisible man in the sky yes. stuff. The, the scripted wrote stuff. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily a huge Ben Carson fan, but here's something that I suspect uh, 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 Sargon here is, is going to discover in short order, even in his own country. At some point, you're going to discover that religious people don't appreciate being talked down to like that. Yes. And uh, if you are so stupid on the idea of God, because you've been listening to the likes of Richard Dawkins and, or Sam Harris and think that makes you brilliant, son, if you think God is a sky fairy, you have the mental deficiency. Yes. Or, or that God's even remotely com comparable. Yo, you, you, you are so uh, philosophically and historically and culturally illiterate. I mean, your, your opinion on the matter is worthless. Uh, correct. And you might want to think about this in politics because it is going to bite you on the ass eventually. Let's, let's just keep going because he's got a lot more to, to yeah, say. Yeah, well, can I just say it is very similar to the way uh, leftists always, always kind of try to shoehorn every, every, uh, every, every belief they have into like a single sentence. And it's like, oh, well, the racist, uh, uh, anti-feminist, this guy, this guy, this guy. And it's just like if you're not already on board with everything they're saying, they'll just – you're just shut out. So there's no attempt at persuasion at all. Just like atheists, when they say, yo, you're not existent fictional sky fairy. It's like they, they're already shoving all these presuppositions into everything they, into everything they say and just weakening any, uh, any persuasive force what they're saying might have had. Is it any wonder that atheists are rightly disliked? I'm just curious. Have you ever wondered that question your whole life? Have you ever wondered why atheists are widely disliked even by people who aren't particularly religious. I'm just curious. All right, that was, was going to be one of our videos, but yeah, go on. Yeah, uh, there's many more videos to be made, I'm sure. Here we go. Who you can't prove exists and I'm not interested in talking about. An entity that has absolutely no bearing on how a country can be run because nobody can contact it to ask it its opinion. Says who? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Yeah, what is your standard for proof, sir? Give us a standard for proof. Because let me tell you from where I stand. Uh, having been an atheist for quite some time and read all the authors that are your big heroes, um, the, the, the reality should be setting into you by now that religion is a more complex matter than you thought. I would have hoped so uh, as you slowly get demonetized and realize atheism isn't even all that popular anymore. Um, but Good God, man. Here, I will give it to you that I give to everybody else who, who, who will listen. This is a basic working definition of God outside of the uh, – uh, oh, well, I'll start with the dictionary, which just says supreme being. Um, a dictionary almost everybody will accept is uh, an infinite, intelligent, eternal mind that's driving the universe. It's mm -hmm. rational to think that exists, sir, and if it does exist, it's an important question. It's ridiculous for you to sit there and say it hasn't been proved. It's been proved to me. It's been proved to a lot of people. Why do we care if it's been proved to your arbitrary satisfaction? Yeah. Can, can you specify what you would take as proof? Because I got proof in a lot of areas. More than enough to satisfy me. More than enough to satisfy friends. Yes. Well, he, he, had, he had three whammies in a row there. And so first he said that you can't prove, and as he says who. And secondly, he said that I have no interest in talking about. And I find this is such, such a frequent, like, frequent cowardly position. Uh, uh, with atheists, they'll be coy and they'll say things about God. And they'll, they'll just like plant these little like passive aggressive things, you know, your sky fairy or whatever. And when you try to nail them on it, it's like, oh, well, I'm not even interested in talking about it. Well, obviously you are. If you if you just said what you said, you know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson does it all the time. He plays footsie with the Christians. He says, "Oh, well, I'm not interested in talking about God, but we know that the universe has no purpose." And so the, there is always that kind of <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not interested in talking about God, and we know the universe has no purpose. That yeah, that's uh, you uh, there. That, that uh, that's. All I can think of, it's a game of footsie, basically. No, I'm not interested in talking, but I'll, I'll say something anyway, just, just to needle you. And then uh, the third thing he said is, is that uh, uh, has no bearing, I'm paraphrasing here, but has no bearing on the way we run a government 
that is a, 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 a very controversial claim because, you know, it's written in the Declaration of Independence. We, we find these truths to be self-evident that, you know, we, men were endowed by their creator. Hey, it's, it's right there. Well, he would probably just say something knuckleheaded about evolution there, proving he doesn't understand the subject at all, um, really. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at, at, the, at the root base, sir, have you, 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 I know that you like to talk about history. What happens when uh, you have something, a, a class of people who are considered inferior because of their religion? What happens when you do that? What's happened that a few times in your own country? In fact, sir, do you even remember, <laughs> you know, uh, no, not that the Catholics were always innocent, you know, they weren't always the good guys, uh, but uh, repression of Catholics is a thing in your country, and mistreating Catholics is a thing in your country. It's gone back and forth, of course. Um, did you think that all that was just going to go away, or did you think that uh, Christian complaints in your own country may need to be heard if they have complaints and concerns? Yeah. Just curious. And, uh, when I was an atheist, and I was one young man, I think I was better educated as an atheist than you ever were. I really do think that. I'll put it to the test sometime if you've got the guts. Um, I never thought, you know, when people talked about God and stuff, I thought, well, at least that's a good sentiment that gives them some kind of moral bearing. And that's all I had to think about it. I didn't have to look down on them as, 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 as lesser human beings who should be told to be shut up. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Uh, I, I don't get that with this younger generation. I really don't. It's it's, it's not a likable thing. I can understand yeah. why atheists are disliked. Well, because they're they're constantly pounded over the head with this narrative, you know. Yeah. All right. But, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry. Say what you're gonna say. I was gonna say I was gonna go forward. You want me to keep stop? No. Well, I, I think it, I think it's worth noting that without uh, uh, the whole notion of equality is basically a religious precept. I mean, without without this notion that, that God endows all of us with with these with these attributes, uh, and you and you're working purely on the on the naturalistic worldview. I don't know what the what the whole concept of equal rights would be grounded in. I, I, and look at what's happened in politics since uh, since people were basically uh, uh, you know they they had basically Christianity just kind of drummed out of the culture. And what happens almost immediately? Almost immediately, the left comes up with identity politics, where if you're not in this tribe or you're not in this tribe, you, you can make no no uh, claims about how anything should be. And in the right, we have uh, the alt-right, we have the white nationalists. In the kind of, in that kind of, even the partial eclipse of God, uh, all of a sudden we get tribes. Yep. And the, the whole concept of, of, of this overarching narrative of, of equal rights, that we're all endowed with these certain attributes, that goes by the wayside. Immediately, we devolve into warring factions. So I, I think I think that is not coincidental at all. I think it is not either. Let's 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 expand upon that point while we listen more to the great wisdom of of Carl Benjamin, who who sat at the feet of the masters, of Sam Harris and He's Christopher. Gold lost, yes. <laughs> Pure brilliance there. All right, let's go. All this does is make for remarkably uncomfortable conversations. Excuse me, can I talk to you about God? No, thank you. I don't believe in God. Yes, but I really want to talk to you about God. Okay, which one? Well, Jehovah, but I don't believe in Jehovah. What do you mean you don't believe in Jehovah? I believe in Thor. You're a fucking infidel, aren't you? Yes, I'm an infidel. Well, fuck. I wonder. You're an idiot on so yeah. many levels. Let me let me give a, a, a suggestion. I just had a great conversation with a with what I would consider an unindoctrinated, non-stupid atheist the other day. Uh, Coach Red Pill. Uh, he's an atheist, but he's not an idiot like this. Um, sir, you're the one who are treating people like infidels. Had you not noticed that? You really are. Yeah. And by the way, if somebody in politics wishes to discuss religion. Uh, it's fair game because religion is an important aspect of people's lives, of their identity, and frankly, from their very sense of what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. It's fair game in politics. 
you know, you guys in the UK have inculcated this attitude that you should never bring up politics and religion. I think the cultural Marxists kind of pushed that on you earlier than they did, they did on the Americans. But you remain a country of believers, regardless of what you'd like to believe. And the last I checked, there are more mass attending Catholics in the UK than there are self-identified atheists. At least if you don't, uh, you know, play the little game where everybody who's not religious is now an atheist. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. I, you might even want to remember that the next, no, I'm not going to say it. But really, there's more of us than you just in the UK, son. And that's uh, not a, it's just something you might want to keep in mind. <laughs> I, I mean, really. Um, um, and it's not just going to be Catholics, because one of the things I can tell you, sir, is that actually Anglicans and Catholics who actually believe in God and go to church in your country are getting along fabulously these days, in many cases. Not all, but quite a few. Uh, Pope even celebrated Mass, and he probably didn't even care about it, did you? Bottom line well, of is... Course, I mean, he hates talking about God, you know? So he makes entire videos about them. And of course, here we have the cheap shot of the Crusades. Uh, it's pretty funny now, considering how anti-Islamic he is. He, <laughs> who, who was it exactly who was doing the most fighting of Muslims uh, historically? Just curious. I would also also like to mention, by the way, you know, currently I'm a supporter of a group called Ordo Militaris, who are Catholics who are actually going to go over to the Middle East with armed men legally, legitimately licensed as security forces to defend Christians in the Middle East. They're really modern day uh, uh, crusaders. Um, <coughs> you're one of the people who wants to, wants to go to war with Islam quite a bit of the time. Guess who's actually doing it instead of making videos about it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, should we keep going? Well, yeah, I just want to get back to the thing he he had. It makes for all sorts of awkward conversations, and and he's so put out by by these little uh, benighted uh, uh, Christians uh, wanting to talk about God, <laughs> and I, it, it's just the fact that you uh, have this condescending attitude does not prove anything. We are not impressed by your by your little condescending, demeaning attitude. But hey, I mean, is it not an awkward conversation where a person? Cannot uh, 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 even brush upon a talk, uh, brush upon the uh, topic that maybe maybe they went to church or something on Facebook without some uh, atheist jumping in with a uh, little invisible sky fairy memes. Do do not uh, atheists impose themselves in the same way these days? Uh, they do it all the time. I've seen it all the time. They're incredibly rude cocksuckers, most of them. Oh, did I just say that? Yes, I did. They're really, they're real assholes a whole lot of the time. Not just in social media. A lot of people are seeing it creep out in everyday life. And guess what? It doesn't make you people liked. Yes. Really? Oh, oh what I like is what I like is what, <laughs> someone's um, in the hospital. I say, oh, please pray. I was like, well, well, you're giving no credit to the doctors. It's like, oh. shut up. Good Lord. Uh, okay, let's let's see more of this. Experience. More Dr. Carson. I mean, I'll just say up front, I don't find Dr. Carson that eloquent a speaker, to be honest with you. Um, uh, although he is talking in a part of the country where it's simple folk and simple talk of God is important to them. They want to hear a prayer. Um, you know, they want to think hard. You know, they, they want to think that they're doing the right thing and that this is a good man. That's all it means. And uh, uh, that's all it sh all you should have to think it means is what I mean. You, should, you, if you were any kind of gracious, decent human being, you'd call that, you know, a nice sentiment. Um, that's what I would have said when I was an atheist. I would have said that's a nice sentiment, at least. Never mm. mind. Plus it go. I wonder. Do they realize that our founding document, our Declaration of Independence, talked about certain inalienable rights given to us by our creator? Our creator, but not God. A.K.A. God. <sighs> what the word God means? Go look it up in the dictionary. Seriously. God. No, I, I think Sargon is talking about the guy on Mount Olympus who, who throws lightning bolts. I think that's what he thinks it is, yeah. Yeah, all right. Anyway, let's keep going. No, 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 no. I don't believe in your God. That's the, you can't just go AKA God and assume that we're all on the same page. We're not. You see, I'm a Gnostic. So I believe. Most atheists are Gnostics, whether they admit it or not. Have you noticed? 
you read through Gnosticism and it's a very atheistic, stupid, quasi mythological philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, which is why it's or, never. Or, or they're agnostic in so far as they believe that there are these power structures that that are designed to just kind of pull the wool over the eyes of of, of the of the kind of, you know. Okay, so you. Have, here's the thing, though. I, I I'm pretty darn sure that if you spoke to any ancient Gnostics, they understand. In fact, if you've got God mentioned in there. Um, if you want to know the reality, Christians have always talked to people of other religions who believed in God. It's in the Bible, son. Mm. It really is. Actually, there you have St. Peter argue with uh, Stoics in the public square, and he quotes Stoic theology. He quotes out of a book of Stoic theology approvingly when talking to the Stoics because it's what you know that bit of stoic theology was perfectly compatible with with christianity um it's widely understood sir that god is not necessarily uh only one religion has the idea i can talk to people of other religions about god and even when i was an atheist what i would do to be polite is like god is okay well what these people must think god is is the best part of themselves that's what i would at least tell myself yeah. and i would just be respectful about it this is apparently beyond you. I have found throughout my life people of various religions can do this. This is why I can talk amiably with a Hindu. Can you? I can talk amiably with a Muslim who's not a jihadi. Can you? I mean, I, I have Jew friends who actually believe in God. We talk. We like each other. Is yeah. that okay? Are you capable of that? I'm sorry. It, it's just the way you can tell when, when, when atheists are trying to uh, uh, score some sort of rhetorical point or something, where they conceptualize things in ways that no one in, in, in everyday life conceptualizes things. Like, like if one person believes that like uh, JFK had a stamp collecting hobby and the other guy doesn't, he wouldn't say, no, I don't believe in that JFK. That JFK doesn't exist. No, they say we both, we both believe in JFK. We just disagree about whether or not he had a, had this particular hobby. But but atheists just take this way of thinking about things that no one adopts in, in just common everyday uh, life, you know? They, they mostly interact with the cartoon religious people in their head. Now, mind you, there are real life walking around religious people who kind of are cartoons. There's <laughs> Ken, Ken Ham, for example, I think is a walking Christian cartoon. Um, sorry, I'm not a fan. Anyway, um, let's just keep going. Uh, he's got more to say. It's going to be more typical atheist blah, I think. Obscurantist blah, I would say. Yeah. Let me just throw in 50 points at once in a big gish gallop and mock this straw man who wanted to talk to you about why God matters to him in a political context. All right, let's see. The world was created by Satan. In fact, you are created by Satan. Your laws are created by Satan. Your Bible's written by Satan. Everything about this world was created by an evil god called the Demiurge. So you can't say, oh, our creator, God, because that's not our creator. Our creator is an evil, evil creature, an evil entity that likes to see humans suffering. You should run for office, dude. Let's see how you get elected on that. <laughs> okay, so he makes up a cartoon religion and uh, cartoon people who believe in it. Let me ask you this for real. Have you met any really honest-to-God Satanists, and do you want any of them having political power, sir? Yeah. If you met somebody who was actually talking that way, would you think he was really the same thing as the serious, censor, sober, Christian, like, oh, I don't know, maybe you think Gavin McInnes is kind of a goof, but he's not an idiot. Um, at least he's no more of an idiot than you. He's religious. Uh, who... You, <laughs> I'm wordless when I get this sort of thing, but what I would tell you is, is if you tell me you worship evil or you hate God, that's a good reason for me to keep my children away from you and to keep you out of politics. So, you know, thank you for revealing that information. I'll never vote for you. And we'll let people know that we've got Satanists who hate us in the area. Yeah. Uh, that's what democracy would be actually about. In a weird way, he's proving why someone's religious views do matter. Yes. I mean, actually, really, I do, th I do have to ask him, what if an actual Satanist who said he thought 
uh, the world was run by an evil god and and uh, we needed to be evil and meant it, would you vote for him? Or would you be glad that you found out that he had these crazy beliefs? Mm. I, Assum, assuming athe, assuming Satanists weren't these days just uh, atheists who were having a laugh, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. I had an interview with someone about that. Anyway, let's keep going. Which is why he made humans that can suffer. Now, why don't you tell me about the bullshit you believe, and we'll agree that it's not compatible, and we'll agree to just leave it out of political conversations. No, we'll agree that you're a loony, and as a Christian, I will not have anything to do with a person who talks like you. And I'll alert other people that, that there's people like you out there and that we need to make sure people like you who talk like that never get into political power. That would be democracy in action, by the way. Well, what even is his logic here? The fact that two people can have contradictory opinions means that the whole issue should not be a political matter at all? How would that work? That's like every, that's like every issue in politics is, is you know, incompatible, contradicting beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and it's a straw man anyway. Nobody actually yeah. thinks that way. Uh, uh, by the way, I've actually spoken to people of very different religions from mine, and I find them I, I can be pleasant with them, and we can find common ground politically. Sorry, that happens all the time. In fact, I, I recently interviewed a witch. That's going to go over real interesting with the Catholics who follow me. I'm really going to have to put a disclaimer on it. But I literally had a friendly interview with a witch lately. Know why? Because none of us can stand atheists. <laughs> anyway. Is he a good witch or a bad witch? Yes. Yeah, he was a good uh, It was interesting. He claims it's an ancient pagan religion. That, that it, It's actually, he goes by Arcadio cult. He, he, he's a nice guy. Half his family is Catholic, which that, that's got to make for interesting Thanksgivings. He, he, <laughs> it's very true. Half his family are like into witchcraft and half of them are Catholic. It's a fascinating little interview. You might want to watch for it. Um, okay. Uh, but, but but that should prove should make a point to you, Sargon. I had more in common with the witch than you. <laughs> That's, how does that happen? Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's keep going. Do they know that the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag says we are one nation under God? Not originally it didn't. Originally it said, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. You know, the sort of pledge that someone in an independent secular republic might have written. The reason your Pledge of Allegiance has under God in it is because in the 50s, as a response to those darned atheist commies, Eisenhower had it put in. I guess you'd just be thankful that by this time they don't. Yeah, okay, let's go back there. And uh, in reality, he just said something that's quite true and not quite true. You're a British, uh, you're, you're British, sir. You shouldn't try to do American history. Yeah. I jumped accidentally. Let me tell you where the pledge actually got added uh, or, or how it actually got added. There were concerns about the Pledge of Allegiance from... Uh, the moment that it was formulated. I'm pretty sure that it came in after uh, it came in after the Civil War. Some had started doing it, but many had not wanted to adopt it. First in the American South, there was resistance politically to it, although that's kind of where it came from. Um, but there was also always religious objections to it. You know why? Because some very serious religious people said, by taking this oath without qualification, I'm putting the state above God. And I'm not comfortable doing that. Mm. That's, that's, that is quite true, by the way. There was yeah. also, of course, concern about the atheistic communists. By the way, Sargon, have you noticed uh, the social justice left are communists? And uh, uh, they're all militant, Christian-hating, militant atheists, those who aren't just, you know. Uh, you, you do have a few uh, hangers-on in social justice circles who are religious, but they're treated as incompetence and, and goons and, and idiots. And it's very clear to most serious Christians they're not even really believers in many cases. Um, the social justice is hardcore, secular, humanist, good-without-God atheism. Uh, is, and, and by the way, he's a big fan, uh, Sargon here is a big fan of the War Horsemen, and it can be shown and has been shown definitively that uh, uh, all four, of the, at least 
Hitchens, Dawkins, and Harris all cribbed from communist propaganda in their in their most famous books. <laughs> they did, and, and so you know, maybe they maybe they were right in fearing the godless commies, and they wanted that under God in there for a good reason. Mm. And it's right. it's not active law in any case, so it shouldn't concern anyone whether whether the pledge uh, uh, includes references to God. That's exactly correct. Um, and in fact, just saying God is the most ecumenical use of the term you can use because yeah. people who are Christian at all can say it. Um, Jews can say it. Muslims can if they really want to. People who aren't religious at all, people who go to AA meetings, lots of people can say God. Because God, just so you know, Sargon is supposed to be the infinite intelligence that's running the universe. So things like the prob laws of probability and laws of physics, math, logic, God's running all that. So, you know, like we're in a big Minecraft simulation. It's not that hard, son. It's really not. Um, you don't have to believe it, but intelligent people can believe that, and there's no conflict there with science or anything else. All right, anyway, should we keep going? Yeah. Stop trying to do uh, American history lessons, uh, Carl. You don't know anything about it. Not originally it didn't. Originally, it said, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation. Oops, I got a little you ahead of myself. You know, the of sort of pledge that someone in an independent secular republic might have written. The reason your pledge of allegiance has under God in it we is put because screen share on. as a response to the darned atheist comments Eisenhower had it put in. I guess you'd just be thankful that by this time they'd already taken out what appears to be the Nazi salute. So it wasn't actually a Nazi salute. It just happened to look a hell of a lot. It just happened to look a hell of a lot like it. In other words, it's a cheap shot. Yes, historically, yeah. by the way, well before the 20th century, American school children used to make this. So did they do, do so in many British schools. It's called the Caesar Salute, and it goes all the way back to Roman times. The, the, the centurions would point their spears at the heart of their leader. It's, it's not a Nazi thing at all, but always with the gratuitous Nazi comparisons from the atheists, I've noticed. It's, it's yeah, always, yeah. they love doing that, and they love pretending Nazis were Christians. It's, it's scandalously dishonest, uh, but they like spreading that meme. Yes, All right, yes. Let's keep going. I like it. Uh, screen share. Okay, rooms on the, on the wall, it says, in God we trust. Every coin in our pocket, every bill in our wallet says, in God we trust. So fucking what? Again, and sorry for all the Wikipedia links, but this is so well documented. This was added in the 50s, presumably as a response to the godless red menace. So if it's in our founding document, which, was real, which it isn't, if it's in our pledge. Yeah, in the 50s, you know, long after the founding of your nation. It's in our courts, and it's on our money. All of which proves very little. But we're not supposed to talk about it. You don't even know where you're going with this, do you? What in the world is that? <laughs> It's because it's not conducive to discussion. People who don't share your beliefs or your religion or your opinion, you can't persuade them to believe in God via your holy book. They're can't persuade them to believe in God? Uh, yeah, he was. There. Where was he trying to persuade you of anything at all, sir? And in fact, why is he required to persuade you of yeah. anything at all? He's speaking for an audience that agrees with him, not with you. Why is your opinion relevant at all? If, if, you, are, if you are hostile to our values, it is not, it is not uh, obligatory upon us to try to appease you. I mean... No, it really isn't. And uh, again, I'm going to repeat, this conversation could be had in the UK. Have a look sometime. I've got a number of British, Canadian, Australian, other European followers, even volunteers from, from Europe where supposedly everybody is atheist. They're not. Yeah. At what point do you get, you know, just keep talking down to them like they're inferiors, I guess, and then they care what you think and what your fate is because why? I mean, really. I, I, th this is This is... I don't even know if this is a rhetorical question because I think it's a just it's a dead serious one. Uh, if Christians are concerned about this, or not just Christians, any religious group is concerned about this, and you have this attitude, why should they care about you, your concerns, or your rights at all? Mm. Give me a reason. 
I mean, really, because you really just seem like a flaming know-it-all jackass. Why does anybody give a damn? Yeah. By the way, uh, uh, he was talking about all the references to God being put in the 50s. Now, someone with more knowledge about this might uh, correct me, but uh, if you actually go to, like, Washington, D.C. and look at the Capitol and look at, look at the Supreme Court, aren't there, like, Bible verses in the very buildings themselves that date from the 1800s? You know, there, there, there was a, 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 a propaganda push uh, coming out of the new atheist movement to try to scrub the religiosity of the American founders, which is an ongoing project uh, in yes. some atheist circles and in, socialist, in social justice circles. But in reality, the founders were all very adamant about the, the necessity of God um, and, 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 and the importance of religion to, us, to, to the survival of the republic. You'll find they all quite agreed on that. Some yeah. of them were not very religious, but none were atheists. Um, in yeah. fact, they couldn't. They they oh, had low standards, just like just like John Locke did, uh, the classical liberal, because they were classical liberals too. And classical liberals respect religion, so they he does not that they did not respect people who did not respect religion. Uh, they were all anti-Catholic, by the way, but that's 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 another conversation. They were all very religious men or very respectful of religion, and they all wrote quite passionately about it. And you find God references all over the place. And by the way, other very famous founders were very, very religious. In fact, the First Amendment, which is where we get the Religious Freedom Clause, it did come from Thomas Jefferson, but the impetus came from the Southern Baptists. And that's a historical fact. That Well, what you'd call Southern Baptists now, they were Virginia Baptists who wanted to make sure religious freedom was enshrined. Uh, so it was religious people who even gave this country the whole idea of religious freedom in the first place. And it was the Baptists. I'm a Catholic. We don't always get along with Baptists. But thank you, Baptists, for that First Amendment. Uh, and references to God were to be found all over the place. Prayers, opening prayers in Congress from the beginning. I just... Lay off, man. You don't know anything about American history, and it doesn't sound like you know that much about your own, at least as far as these things go. But hey, go go to uh, – well, let's invite him to come to America and go to some uh, Republican town hall meetings where all the SJWs are busted, and whenever they mention God or Jesus, every, everyone just acts like a whole bunch of monkeys at the zoo flinging their shit. Those are the guys you would normally speak against. Yeah, I'll take them to parts of the United States where Democrats still uh, uh, go out of their way to be kind to religious voters because it matters. Um, so you can stop pretending that religious people don't matter, which is uh, or can be treated like with contempt. Anyway, um, should we keep going? Sure. I'm getting near this end of this train wreck. Aware of it already, and you're not willing to have your opinion changed either. So you both reach an impasse where neither of you is prepared to change your opinions on the subject. So what's the point of discussing it? In medicine, we call it schizophrenia, a form of craziness. That's probably the lowest I can imagine anyone sinking. Because you don't understand your own country's history. You don't understand why people don't believe in your God. And you don't understand why people don't want to talk about your religion. Who are you speaking for exactly? And why do you think we don't understand? We hear a lot of anti-religiosity in this country. It comes from folks who talk a lot like you. We see lawsuits. We see uh, demonization of us. We're blamed now for homophobia, which is a is a is a a, a, a bum rap, by the way. Hmm. Uh, I can prove that to anybody who wants me to. Uh, actually, non-religious people are more homophobic, not less. So-called homophobia appears to be genetic. Ha ha! Um, atheist regimes also have a worse record. Yes, far. they really do on in how they treat homosexuals. Um, but leaving all that aside, I mean, good God, man! Uh, this country has been under assault from people like you and your heroes, trashing and lying about Christians and Christianity for more than ten years. I would expect you to hear more of that on the stump in the coming years, not less. I really do. All right, should we keep going? Sure. You think that they have a mental illness and may be a danger to themselves or others. The great irony of all of this, though, is that anyone from history who claims 
that they are speaking to God or talking to angels or seeing things or whatever, they probably actually did have schizophrenia. Please prove your extraordinary claim. Yeah. He's now suggesting like, that anybody in history who had a supernatural or paranormal experience probably had schizophrenia. Uh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, but please prove that extraordinary claim and please prove where you got your evidence. By the way, I will not accept God Saad as an expert witness here. Sorry. I want to know what psychiatrist you brought. And I'll bring my own psychiatrist while I'm there. Here we see actually a return to the most vile thing there is about the new atheist movement ever since the, the new atheist explosion with Harris. Hitchens, Dawkins, uh, 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 Dennett, probably the least bad of the bunch, but still. The suggestion that people who believe in God are mentally ill. Uh, this is more than offensive. This is the sort of language that uh, will get people to eventually take up arms against you as an oppressor if you ever get political power. And you should hear that again. You talk this way about religious people. If you got into political power, you're the kind of people, you're the, you're the kind of person that people take arm, up arms against. How dare you suggest that religious people and spiritual experiences are all mental illness? Yeah. How dare you? Uh, you have no scientific basis for that whatsoever. Uh, and, and you can even find a contemporary, of, of course, I mean, it has roots in, in everything from the USSR and, and, and all, all the communist regimes who treated, who treated it almost as a mental illness. But you can find it in, in, in philosophers like Peter Boghossian, who wrote a, 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 a manual for creating atheists. He would actually advocate compulsory medication to erase people of, of the disease of faith, supposedly. So yeah, yeah, already already we're getting those little uh, uh, totalitarian uh, uh, impulses in the in the in the atheist movement. He's gonna give us a little more of this, so I'm gonna let it roll to make sure, make so people know I'm not overreacting. Here we go. Legitimately thought that they were in contact with a higher power, there was probably something wrong with their mind. And now, thousands of years later, a neurosurgeon is standing before a group of people saying, "Hey." You remember that crazy person from 2,000 years ago? We should talk about the things they said thousands of years ago when discussing policy. And you can't see why that's stupid. And you know, it's fine. <laughs> Do you want to comment? Because I'm going to save it. Okay, okay. Well, I, I, don't, I don't even know. I mean, what, what you said was just so flabbergastingly incoherent. I mean, it's hard to know where to begin with something like that. It's more of the, 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 the God is a delusion crap, which is pseudoscience from a pseudoscientific cult, by the way. Let's yeah, keep going. They were crazy, uh, because why? And they lived a long time ago. Well, yeah. Most, all all yeah. the classical authors who, who the Founding Fathers read lived a long time ago if, if they weren't you know, near contemporaries of Jesus Christ. By the so, way, what neurosurgeon would be consulting that way? That's another good classic example of an atheist straw man. Although if you want, I can get you in contact with neurosurgeons who not only believe in God, but who believe near-death experiences are real and not delusional. There's numerous examples available yeah. of medical professionals who will do that for you. But anyway. Um, could, could you please just hop back 10 seconds because I want to catch that again. Okay, no problem. No problem. Maybe more than 10 seconds, sorry. In policy, and you can't see why that's stupid. And you know, it's time. It's time for us to realize that there is nothing wrong with living by godly principles. No one said there is or isn't. The debate that you're having with yourself on this stage is whether your personal beliefs about God are relevant to political debate. What? No, no. Uh, first of all, a lot of atheists have problem with people living by godly principles. A whole lot of atheists, if not most, have 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 a problem with that. Oh, I've Especially, seen it. I've seen it. They, they, they hate you if you don't... I, I'm serious now, and I'm not even going to lie. They hate you if you don't want to uh, party with them. They, they just really they do hate you. If you look at that, no, I don't want to have sex like that. No, I don't want to get drunk. No, I don't want to have the drugs. No, I don't think that's good for you. They hate you for that.
it's not good enough that you just say, oh, I don't want to do that, and I think it's bad. You got to hate on people for feeling that way. Yeah. Secondly, uh, Ben Carson is talking about values. He's not talking about policy. So, so why shouldn't he talk about that? You know. Absolutely. Let's see if we can push through to the end of this. We, we're getting, getting too near the end of the, our time anyway. Fucking not. Seriously, conservatives, you need to stop talking to people about God. It's one of the major reasons you're losing the public debate. What? You're making everyone cringe. Just keep it oh, shut your- up. Yeah, I've heard enough. Yeah. Uh, this, by the way, and I love it, is the latest anti-atheist meme running around the internet, and I think it's going to stick. Shrek in a fedora is the response. Uh, is, 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 I think it's time atheists take the fedora back. It was, it was transferred for a little while to so-called MRAs, but it was originally an atheist symbol, and it needs to stay an atheist symbol. Carl even looks a little like this, too. He really does. Anyway. Um, yeah. The, the whole uh, – uh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I just want to say uh, uh, the whole faces of atheism, what was that? Like, that was like 2013 or something. That I, was- I remember that one. Yeah, no, was, that's where the whole fedora thing came from. Uh, when they had the Reddit uh, of "This is my face of atheism," <laughs> and there was a there was there was a kind of a, a dreadful uh, a continuity between the pictures, where it was it was guys with with unfortunate facial hair and, and kind of portly body types and fedoras, <laughs> and that was not even uh, that was not even a meme before then. But people just said, "Why do these guys all look alike?" <laughs> so. Yeah. In reality, I, I interviewed a guy called named Rick from uh, Rome is Burning, real good guy on Twitter, and he used to be a Satanist and a hardcore atheist. He's 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 not he's an Orthodox Christian now, Eastern Orthodox, not Catholic. But um, uh, and he says the fedora thing came right out of Satanism because that's how Anton Lavey uh, uh, wore it, and that atheists started picking it up in the uh, mid to late two thousands there, and then there was an effort to get rid of that image, but it seems to be coming back. Yeah, well, it, it never went away. That, that's the thing, is that people, people made fun. By the way, that's why I think uh, uh, the new atheism train, when the brakes started being put on the, on the new atheism train, was that, was that unfortunate, uh, uh, fit, this is my face of atheism, in, in 2013 or so. But uh, you realize they've never stopped doing that. They've never stopped putting their little their little statements of uh, uh, their little doctrinal statements on top of pictures of them posing with fedoras. It hasn't stopped in, in the four years since. It's sad. Yeah. It's sad. Listen, we got a couple. We got to close up soon. We got a couple of commenters. Uh, Jen's bug says hello. Have you run into any atheists who don't understand what interpretation means? Today did today it was like crashing into a brick wall. Yes, Jen. In fact, what they really what atheists want, generally speaking, is they're going to interpret the Bible their way. They are then going to impute that meaning onto you and demand that you defend the meaning that they imputed to it. And then they will even be so rude as to even sometimes pretend they're just confused. I don't understand. This is clearly what it says. And they're being dishonest and disingenuous. One of the things I usually actually will tell people is, listen, I don't even get into biblical discussions with unbelievers because uh, people who don't believe in God don't read that book right anyway. Because, by the way, they don't. Um, Ask something more important, like why I believe what I believe. Um, And GPA says, desperate, right? The ones who destroyed the left in the election, media included. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to make a prediction right now. Uh, he may think conservatives are, are making people cringe talking about God. I'm going to predict that in the UK, you're going to hear more, not less, talk about God. By the way, the Brexit with the vote, which uh, uh, he favored, Sargon favored the Brexit vote. Uh, so did a majority of mass attending Catholics. In fact, it was Catholics who put it over the top. You're welcome. I can show you the stats for that in your own country. Nigel, what's his name, Farage, has been talking up God, and I think, and you're seeing a big religious revival, the media's not covering, but John Lennox and others are paying packed houses there. I suspect you're going to see a religious revival in the UK. I really do. Um, And it won't be televised. It won't be on the Beeb. (laughs) No, it won't be in the BBC. They're all all reading from the same hymnal there, yeah. Yeah, 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 it will not. 
uh, the DMCA, well, I can't say it, but someone says, if Sargon became religious, he would be called Sargon of the God. Yeah, the thing is, he, if he weren't such a shallow, ill-informed ass and an arrogant, condescending douchebag when it comes to subjects like religion, he wouldn't be that bad. In fact, I think if he ever got over his, his, his fear of the whole God thing, he'd make a magnificent churchman. Yeah. <laughs> he really would. There, there are guys, I, I truly believe this as I've gotten older, it, it's not always about intelligence, it's not always about, about book learning. If you have that impulse in you that always wants to learn more, that always wants to examine both sides of the issue, that will pay off just dividends in the long run. Now, there are guys on the atheist side, uh, Stefan Molyneux, I saw his videos back in the day, I thought some of, some of his arguments were embarrassing. I thought some of his arguments were just embarrassingly bad, but yeah. he has that thing where he wants to learn. He wants to see both sides of the argument. And I think uh, maybe to a slightly lesser degree, I would put Dave Rubin in the same category. He he's, he doesn't want to write off religious people. He wants to, what do you have to say? I'll listen to you. You know. Yeah, and so I'm going to tell you what. I don't think he'll do it, but I'm going to close with a book recommendation. I don't even know if this book has been released yet or not, but it's going to be a winner. I should be promoting my own book, but that would require me to finish writing it. Uh, here we go. I turn on the screen sharing. I dare you, Carl Benjamin, Sargon of Akkad, to read this book by Professor Edward Fazer, Five Proofs of the Existence of God. Fazer is quite a mind, sir. And he is not Ray Comfort. Yes. He is not William Lane Craig. I'm sorry, he's way smarter than William Lane Craig. No offense to William Lane Craig. He's certainly smarter than any of the four horsemen. And I mean yes. it. I dare you to read this. Read it. Don't read what other people tell you to say about it. Read it. Just read it and come away and you'll know something more. Even if you've decided it's all wrong, you will know that you've engaged an intelligent mind and can stop being so condescending and pretentious. You're not Richard Dawkins, and he's not all that to begin with. So there. Yeah. Right. So it's about time we wrap up. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm good. Uh, I got There we go. Well, everybody, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. We have been demonetized. We could use your support on escapingatheism.com. We may also wind up losing the channel completely. A lot of people are these days. So be sure to watch for us on others, uh, on escapingatheism.com. Look for us on other social media. And uh, uh, God bless everybody. No, well, let me, let me just also say that uh, uh, me getting the DMCA from a, a, from a science enthusiast was, was certainly alarming. So if anything should happen to my channel, uh, I also have a Facebook, a Deflating Atheism Facebook page. And yep. so please check that out, subscribe there. And if something should happen to my channel, that will be my, my means of, of communicating with, with, with people. Watch Brett Keane's page too. I've just made an agreement with him. I may be, we may be putting some content on his webpage. Yes. Anyway, God bless everybody and Ave Maria.